My name is James Garbraith and I'll be presenting a reflection on what I've learnt on human resource management throughout this unit. I'll be using the Rolf and Al reflective model um, throughout this presentation. Having learnt about the disadvantages of relying on job specification during recruitment, I'm now more informed about the effect of job specification on an employee, causing them to be less likely to think on a systems level. This has made me ponder about the possibility that it may perhaps prevent employees from appreciating the multiple dimensions that make up the workplace and how they are all interdependent and interlinked. I realise that this new information has now shifted my attitudes regarding writing job adverts. If the specification of their role is too limited and narrow, it can encourage the employee to work with a tunnel vision mindset. Going forwards, I will think about helping the employee consider how their work is related to the overarching objectives of the school and education system. In particular, I will make clear what the ramifications and implications of the potential actions and decisions are. I also read about how the role descriptions of a new job tend to be primarily focused on the technical attributes and required skills, neglecting non-job tasks and qualities which may be found in the interpersonal interpersonal realm of traits deemed important to execute the job successfully. The fact that I found this observation in fact relatively insightful and significant means that I, to some extent, realise the importance of soft skills, especially when it comes to working in teams. Wanting to improve the innovative, adopt a can-do attitude and enlarge the set of skills one possesses is crucial to working effectively as a teacher. The reality is that technical skills are not enough. To form productive relationships with students, parents and fellow teaching colleagues requires a high degree of self-awareness and emotional intelligence. To rectify this issue, a possible solution is to utilise the internet as a means of retrieving additional information in relation to the recruitment process of prospective employees. Idikin Jaal 2016 argued that it is possible to review any sites such blogs which belong to the candidate through the conduct of a web search. Social media can inform recruiters if the candidate will be good fit, a good fit for the organisational culture. I am well aware of the importance of a new teacher being compatible with this culture of the school. I have had teachers who have left the job not long after commencing the contract due to misaligned teaching philosophies and expectations and approaches which did not gel with the teaching styles and pedagogies promoted by the school. However, if the teacher's personality is not the, the right fit, this can lead to them quitting as well. This knowledge about social media and hiring then makes me feel more supportive of using additional means to work out the personality of a candidate beyond the conduct of an interview, allowing me to potentially predict the likelihood of the potential teacher for staying in the role. I'm aware that social media representations are not necessarily true reflections of the candidate's actual personality. However, in future recruitment processes, I'll consider navigating social media to determine the level of extroversion and agreeableness possessed by the applicant as perhaps reflected in the comments and likes, which are visible on the teacher's social media page. The arrangement of posts can reveal the creativity held by the teacher, and the variety of quotes and activities could be an indicator of the candidate's willingness to be open to new experiences. Moreover, the posting of inappropriate content could potentially be indicative of decreased conscientiousness or compromised integrity that may occur in the workplace. Given that the school I'm working at is a stressful workplace due to its low SES context and the problematic student behaviour which occurs on a frequent basis, I felt a sense of reassurance when I read about the possibility to conduct stress interviews. To some extent, personality traits and social skills can be ascertained through referees and interviews. However, it's much less likely to work out whether the employee performs well under stress. I found that some teachers have initially presented well in interviews, yet when stressful events have occurred, they have not been able to handle the pressure as competently as others. Reading about stress interviews tells me that it's possible to work this out in advance of a prospective teacher starting a position. I realise that to improve my hiring process, I need to implement something similar to a stress interview which can measure a teacher's emotion regulation ability. In saying that, a consequence of intimidating a candidate such placing undue stress on them is that it can have a negative influence on further recruitment processes. That is, although it can accurately determine the emotion regulation abilities of the teacher as a way of working out whether, whether they'll be a good fit to manage the emotional labour of the role, the way in which the applicant perceives the friendliness of the interviewer could be affected, thereby lowering the attractiveness of the organisation in the eyes of the applicant. The teacher will not necessarily want to work at the school. A way around this can be by supplying substantial information at the beginning of the process and then apologising to the candidate and explaining the purpose of the stress interview on completion of it. In terms of workforce design at the school I work at, I realise that it is still comp compartmentalised into its respective departments. I learned about how organising businesses around their functions is not necessarily the most effective way of designing a workplace. This learning, in particular which I undertook, implies that I haven't prob probably challenged the status quo enough when it comes to thinking about running a school. In order to boost employee performance, I'm reflecting on the way I could establish cross-functional cooperation so that all of the learning area departments in the school are communicating with one another and working together. This would help facilitate cross-curricular learning for the students as well. 
Having become aware of the different methods used to conduct performance management processes, I've now understood the importance of allowing teachers to voice their opinions. Their input needs to be valued if the decision process is to be effective. Enabling employees to present their self-evaluation is critical as it provides the opportunity for establishing mutual working relationships. This finding in the literature has made me think about how I've previously not valued the significance of performance appraisal interviews. It's challenged it's changed my attitude towards realising that employees want to know how they're performing. In the absence of one, they will perceive the score to be unfair. In the future, I'll make modifications to the performance management interview by providing more agency with respect to the teacher and employee. This, however, arguably takes away some authority from myself, as more onus is placed onto the teachers and employees. In terms of trying to attract the best teachers and recruit the most talented employees, I read about the significance of employee branding as a way of promoting the attractiveness of the employer. It made me wonder about the way in which this internal investment could reap the benefits when it comes to student outcomes and results. My mindset has now changed where I've pondered about the power of employer branding techniques, appreciating their effectiveness as they can attract, motivate and retain the most talented employers and teachers. I've had no teachers who have not necessarily held the same values surrounding improving low SES students' outcomes. In particular, they have not had the same drive when it comes to social justice. For this reason, our solution is to market the school and make it explicit about what the school is seeking in its future teachers. That is, what set of values are desired by the school. This is in order to ensure that successful teaching candidates' values will align with the school's teaching philosophy and vision, leading to decreased employee attrition and staff turnover, and improving the cohesiveness of the teaching team. For example, in the future, it could be possible to emphasise the large amount of professional learning which is offered by the school and highlight the career progress progression opportunities which are available as well as the vibrant teaching team which is present at the school. I read a statistic which made me aware of how my school, like other workplaces, can have new employees leave prematurely. Approximately 50-60% to 60 of new employees quit within the first seven months of commencing. Is the fact I came across and made me realise how it is a widespread issue that plagues a variety of industries and workforces. New hire orientation programmes were found to be the contributing factor with respect to the likelihood of whether a new employee would stay on. I reflected on the induction slash orientation programme at the school I lead and realised that it is quite substandard and likely setting up the new hires for failure. I have had new teaching staff leave. Lack of rigour and fatherliness evident in the induction and orientation programme may have negatively impacted them. All current teachers should take greater responsibility at ensuring that the new employee fits in, settles in well, and has taught all the new processes and procedures. The last page is the references page, which outlines the references I've used in constructing this presentation where I've reflected on what I've learned throughout the unit on human resource management. In summary, I've learned about performance management, I've learned about job specification. I've learned and reflected on using social media as an additional means of recruiting employees. I've learned about stress interviews. I've learned and reflected on workplace design, performance management processes, talent attraction and selection as well as induction and orientation programs.